Okay. So now on to the main event here. We know that a, a helpful step in the decision-making process is hearing from a former student who's been in your shoes. It's my great pleasure tonight to introduce Evan Bernstein, our alumni speaker this evening. And let me tell you a little bit about him. Evan is a New York regional director for the Anti-Defamation League with nearly 20 years of experience in the nonprofit sector, serving in a number of roles that champion important causes that are so important today. Evan regularly serves as a local and national media source on issues related to civil rights and anti-Semitism. Evan has forged important partnerships with elected officials, school administrators, and intergroup leaders across New York State, and has also testified in front of the New York City Council on a range of topics, including public school bullying. Evan earned his bachelor's degree from Western Connecticut State University and went on to complete a degree here, a master's degree in management at the Harvard Extension School in 2011. Tonight, Evan will share with you insights about his life leading up to the decision to pursue a master's degree, his experience here at Harvard University, and how the decision to complete a degree changed his personal and professional life. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce Evan Bernstein. We moved from Arizona to Boston in the winter of 2007. My daughter was only a couple of months old. And I took a position uh, as a national director of development for an organization that helped uh, train leaders on college campuses. What better place to do that than in Boston with so many schools? But I knew at that point in my career, being 34 years old, that I needed, if I wanted to get out of development, which I, what I wanted to do, I wanted to run an organization. I knew that I wanted to be someone that was going to be the thought leader for an organization, someone that's going to be setting policy, not only raising money, but setting policy for an organization, that I had to get myself educated. I had to get myself activated and ready and knowledgeable to do that. So right away when I started the position, I said, okay, I'm in Boston. There's going to be a plethora of things and opportunities for me to be able to, to extend myself and extend my education and grow. And I did a Google search like everybody else. And I saw all the usual schools. But then I saw the Harvard Extension School. And I said, what is the Harvard Extension School? What is this? I lived in Boston in the early 2000s. I'm from New England. You know, I, I thought I knew all the schools, Harvard Law, Harvard Kennedy Law. I never heard of the Harvard Extension School. And it was shocking to me. So I started doing more research, just like you're doing right now. And I started realizing that this, this was absolutely an unbelievable hidden gem, a place that you could get a Harvard education, flexible, and get everything that you need to be able to grow professionally. At that point, as I said, I was 34. I think I was one year older than the average age that was said earlier. And so for me, I already knew what I wanted. I started my master's at Columbia University in my early 20s, and it wasn't for me. And I thought I was going to take like a two-year break, which I ended up taking like a 10-year break. So it was a perfect opportunity for me to come back in, but this time really knowing what I wanted to do. And they had this amazing management program with a concentration in managing nonprofits. And I took my first course with Professor uh, Patricia Dayton in the fall of 2008, Introduction to Nonprofits. And it was life-altering, as almost every one of my courses were. Because when, in that moment, I started learning about case methodology, learning, learning about how to look at Harvard business cases that were actually analyzing nonprofits. And I was already working for a nonprofit. So I was able right away as I was taking my three entry level, my three, my three mission level classes, I was able to take those classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then come back into the office the next day and actually utilize what I was learning, which was so amazing. You know how empowering it was? It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And I started looking at organizations differently. I looked at the, the four frames and Peter, uh, Peter Drucker and learning about how organizations work and how businesses work and about financing and taking these classes. And it was unbelievable, but it was incredibly hard. It was incredibly hard. My wife got pregnant again my, with my son, Elon. The economic downturn happened. I was responsible for keeping the lights on and the bills paid for our nonprofit. We had one of the worst economic downturns since the Great Depression. So simultaneously, I had to raise a young, help raise a young family with my wife. I had to be able to keep the lights on on an almost $4 million nonprofit here in Boston, 
and manage the right papers and take coursework and take the red line to Cambridge and then get on the bus near Auburn Street back to Brookline and do that consistently. And it got really hard. And I think about some of the things that I had to do in order to get that degree accomplished. I can't believe I, I did it. I still look back on it, and I can't believe it. I honestly can't believe it. I, was, I, I remember writing papers in, in, in Scottsdale Public Library in Arizona when I was on vacation, on Amtrak going down to Washington, D.C., in a hotel room in Jerusalem on a Saturday night, in Los Angeles in the Hilton. Believe me, those are not, when I was in those areas, that, the last thing I was wanting to think about was writing a paper on organizational management or human resource management, but you have to do it. And, and you know, I remember when my son was born, my wife had an emergency C-section, okay? And I'm running, we're running to Brigham Women's. And, and my, I'm not gonna say the professor's name, but the professor would not let me hand the paper in late. And I had my paper on my USB stick in my pocket. And I'm taking off the robe. My wife comes back into the room, and she, she's on the bed. I'm like, everyone's okay. Baby's okay. Yolan's okay. I run to the nurse's station. I shove the USB stick into the computer. The nurse is looking at me like, what are you doing? Your wife just had an emergency CC. Actually, I, I got to get the paper in. I got to get the paper in. Right? It's Harvard, right? It's Harvard. So I get the paper in, I hand it in, the Gmail going on, boom, get the paper out, go back, go back to my wife and my son and my daughter and my mom and everyone else and enjoy, and enjoy that amazing moment. But that's the kind of stuff that you're going to have to experience when you're doing this. And it's not easy. And it's, it's really hard, but it's really rewarding. And there were things that kept me going, especially, you know, for me, I did it in three years, around that year and a half marker where you're like, can I keep, do I really need to keep doing this? I have a good job, I'm doing my thing. Do I really need to continue on with this unbelievably tenuous thing, even though it's Harvard? You absolutely do. You absolutely do, okay? There were, there were three things that kept me motivated throughout my, my degree program, okay? Number one was what I said, the learning that I was doing, to be able to use that knowledge that I was getting right away in my workspace, where I was getting feedback from my lay leadership, my board members, and other colleagues, that they saw me morphing into a different professional. They saw me thinking differently, because, especially because of the case model and case studies. And that was something that I, I, I felt it happening, but it was great to get the feedback from others. The other thing was walking to Harvard Yard, walking through Johnson Gate. I'm a big Red Sox fan. It was like going into Fenway Park every day. Even when it was freezing cold, icy rain, I had a long day, I'm getting on the train to get to that 5.30 class on the red line, and you walk into Harvard Yard, it's like Goodwill hunting, and you are there, and you're doing it, and you're walking to Seaver Hall, or you're going to Maxwell Dorkin, or you're going to Northwest Science, and you're saying to yourself, I'm doing this. This is hollowed ground. So when you feel that, like, I don't want to do it, just think about the surroundings you're in and get, get, get your strength from that. And I was lucky because I had one extra thing that happened to me. This is the where, where's Waldo in this, right? But, but I'm the one in the far right on top, the only one wearing a tie. Yeah, oh, yeah right on. <laughs> Without my glasses, I could see better then. And I was lucky enough to be put on to a student board at the Kennedy School called the Hauser Center for Nonprofit Organizations. And our job in that group was to analyze nonprofit curricula for all of Harvard and do research in the field. And right now, it took place right around the middle of my program when I was selected for that. And I, I really felt like then I was really fully a part of Harvard. Because a lot of the people there are people from Harvard Law School, Harvard Business School, Harvard, Harvard College, Kennedy School, School of Public Health. And we're all there together, and we're all working together to make our Harvard a better place, especially for around the nonprofit sector. And that was something that kept me motivated, and know, knowing that, again, I would not be able to sit in that group and do that work if I wasn't in the Extension School program. And that was amazing for me. So we kept working through and kept working through, kept working through, and then all of a sudden, bam, it's graduation. And that's my wife, and that's my father-in-law with the silly looking hat, the Harvard hat, my mother-in-law, Marion. And again, that was one of the greatest days. Walking into Harvard Yard, watching Ruth Bader Ginsburg getting serenaded by Placido Domingo, 
and getting their honorary degrees. And I'm looking to the right and left and I'm seeing Harvard Business School graduates and Harvard School of Education graduates. And we're standing up and we're sitting down. Yeah, I know you guys watched the video that was on the loop before. To be part of that is one of the greatest things you will ever have in your life. I promise you. My marriage, my birth of my children, and that day walking in Harvard Yard, I'm telling you, it's that, it's that big a deal. It's that big a deal. Because you're all surrounded with people that went through the same experiences as you. That, are all, that went through the hardships of raising the family, and doing it all with your job, and all the things. It's, it's, we're all together in that final moment, that one glorious moment. And it's, it's, it was a, it's a fantastic day. It was so wonderful to share it with my family. And then there's the after. The after the degree. The impact of the degree. For me, I got my executive director job right when I graduated in New York. I became the head of a, of a social service organization. Did that for two years, then I got recruited to be the head of the ADL in New York, one of the oldest civil rights organizations in the United States, over 103 year old civil rights organization. And when I, when I came in to both those organizations, specifically the ADL, I was asked, Evan, you need to be a change agent. You need to be able to come in and analyze everything, the financials, the human resources, the development side, the programmatic side, and be a change agent. And I could do that because of my Harvard Extension School degree. And when our new wonderful CEO, Jonathan Greenblatt, came in a year, a year into, my, into my time at the ADL, he says to me, Evan, I need you to do a SWOT analysis, a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis of the ADL, of its entirety. And I could do that because I did it in one of my courses at Harvard Extension School. And I could turn that around in 24 hours to him. Okay? Real life experience. And now, when you leave, you're still part of the family. I'm a member of the Harvard Club in New York. I had two meals there yesterday. I'm there almost every day for meetings. I just joined the Harvard Extension School Alumni Board. This is something that is part of you forever. It's not just a little window in time. You are part of this family forever. It will impact you forever. Harvard doesn't go away. It's unbelievable experience. So much of it is about what you, what you put into it, and you, what you put in, you will get out. There are so many resources for you as an alumni, and you are a Harvard alumni. You are a Harvard alumni when you, when you finish, and it is an amazing thing. I am so thrilled that you are here to, to learn more. I hope you, I know the information session is, is even more expensive afterwards. All, my last parting words to you is, is, is it changed my life to go to the Harvard Extension School. And I know if you decide to, to take it on and put the seriousness to it that, it that it really demands, you will get out of it. I know what I got out of it. And it will change your life forever. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evan. That was really wonderful. And I'm sure all of you really got a much better sense of what it's like to be a Harvard Extension School student and to really how it impacts your personal and professional life. I think that was really terrific.